The stories of 13 remarkable women in Canada are the focus of the new book, Govern Like a Girl, a very timely release. Author Kate Graham joins us now with more on the mark that these women have made. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Annette. Thrilled to be here. So I learned a lot uh, about this book. So you, you focus on the women who have made it as premiers of territories or, or provinces, and also, sadly, the only Canadian women prime minister that we've had. Exactly. Yeah, more than 300 people in Canada have risen to our top leadership roles, and to date, only 13 are women. So this book tries to tell the story about when those 13 women were girls and the kind of change they tried to make around them. Right. Now, what age group is this Is this book for? I, I imagine it being like around the 10-year-old, maybe? Exactly. Yeah, we aim for about 8 to 12, but uh, we've tested a little bit older and a little bit uh, and a little bit younger. And so depending on the child's interest, for somebody who is just starting to think about politics and leadership, uh, hopefully it's a good introduction to the topic. Mm -hmm. and, and I actually learned a lot reading this book because I, I discovered how there are some, you know, some of the, uh, of the female politicians that made it to their top. Um, some had, you know, political backgrounds, but there was one woman who was homeless for a time, another one who was a residential school survivor. So it's, it's remarkable how, but there's a common thread with all of these women, isn't there? There certainly is, yes. I, I conducted these interviews for another project, a, a podcast called No Second Chances. If you're Canada 2020, you can find it more at nosecondchances.ca. But was really struck during the interviews at how each of them had these powerful childhood stories where they were unafraid to try to make change in the places where they were. Uh, Eva Eriak, for example, you know, she was living in Arctic Bay and felt that uh, the people in the community should have the ability to go skating on the Arctic Bay. She went to city council as a delegate to say, can we bring the Zamboni out? The answer was no, uh, but the Zamboni driver went and did it anyway. And so the people in her community could skate. And so each of the women had stories like that long before they had the title, they were trying to make change. And that's what this book is all about. That, you know, kids anywhere in Canada, if there's something that they want to see change, they can be the drivers of that change. Right. And and so often children are the ones who see something that needs to be done, right? And and just giving exactly. girls and, and, and young boys as well the voice to, to speak up and to do something about what they see as an injustice. Exactly. Yeah, I, I really, I'm a, I'm a political scientist. I, I teach at Western and in in a, in a Huron in the political science department. And I think we've really misunderstood uh, political power in Canada, thinking it's just the people in official roles. You know, in a democracy, we as citizens, no matter who you are and where you live and how old you are, we should have the ability to influence the things that matter to us. Right. Another common theme I found, and this was especially true in Kathleen Wynne's story, was, you know, don't think that you have to be like what the stereotypical politician might look like or, or do for a living or, or sound like, right? Right. Yeah, when there's been so few, I think there is pressure to kind of fit into the mold that's been set by others. The vast majority of our top political leaders in Canada, even still today, are older, white, straight, affluent men. And so anyone who doesn't fit that mold, it can be really difficult and there is pressure to fit into it. But we, we need to see more people who don't fit into that mold so that the mold can allow for more people to be able to be themselves when they get into those positions. Mm -hmm. Because going back to Kathleen Wynne, she was told to dress a certain way, to look a certain way, to wear more makeup, right? And, and that doesn't necessarily get that job done. Exactly, exactly. You had your own political background. Um, how did that kind of shape this book as well, your own run at politics? Well, the, I mentioned the podcast earlier. It actually started, I ran as a candidate for the first time in the 2018 election. And the whole project started because of things that I heard at the door about Kathleen Wynne. You know, it's in every election, there are lots of opinions about policy matters, and that's all fine and well. But there were also lots of comments that were really, uh, I would describe as being sexist and homophobic. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I was surprised at the end of that election to find out that there had only been 13 women who reached that role. They last about half as long as men do. And uh, when they get there and they run for re-election, they lose. Uh, we as Canadians have never re-elected a female first minister. So that's what the No Second Chances project is about. Uh, if people want to hear more about that, they can check out the podcast. But I, I really felt that there was an audience we were missing, which was right. kids. Um, okay, so, so we'll get... We'll get yeah, a link so, to that podcast, Kate, um, at, on our website, chch.com, and we'll also get info on how people can get the book. Great job on it. 
Terrific. Thank you so much for having me.